Denver! Jesus Christ is coming soon! Storm clouds are all around us. Darkness has come upon us. The time is late. The night is far spent. Do you hear the voice of God crying out to you, pleading with your soul? He said, come home. He said, cry out and I will forgive you. I will give you grace. I will give you mercy. I will give you forgiveness. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Jesus Christ will pick you up from the darkest pit. He'll breathe life into your soul and he'll set you on a rock and give you a foundation of life. But we are walking through life selfishly in self-pursuit, living in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Smoking our way through life, thinking this is the only existence, my friends. Your life is but a vapor. Your soul is eternal. One day you will stand before God and you will account for everything that you have said, everything that you have done. And the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And that means he loves you. He laid down his life on a cross to die for you. It's a free gift. You can't earn God's love. We are all sinners. We are all messed up. We are all broken. But in our mess, in our sin, God picks us up and gives us grace. And it's because of our faith in what he has done. Do you believe today in the Son of God, King of glory, that he laid down his life for you? He really lived and he really died. We know this is scientific fact, but did he rise from the dead? Hundreds of people witnessed him after he was resurrected. He was here teaching his disciples and he ascended into heaven and he's coming back. But we're shopping our way through life, scared of coronavirus. I've seen pictures of people swimming in the ocean with a mask on. We're so afraid to die. But if you've been covered in the blood of Jesus, when you stand before God, you can know that you're redeemed, that you've been bought and paid for, that you belong to him, that you're an inheritance of God, that you're, excuse me, your holy possession, and you've been given an inheritance by God. The life can be assured to you. Jesus is the way, and he is the truth, and he is the life. The time is late. I'm out here, my voice shut, pleading with you to come home to your maker, to stop rebelling, stop running from God. Repent, Denver, and run to Jesus, because judgment is coming. Do you hear the alarm bells? Do you hear the bells signaling your impending doom? America, we are filled up on the blood of the innocent. We're killing our babies and we think it's okay. And yet we fight. We go in grocery stores and lay on packages of beef trying to save the cows while we're pulling our, our babies out in doctor's offices thinking it's okay. Murder is evil. It doesn't matter what your opinion is, objective truth is that murder is evil. And it has become mainstream because we're selfish. We want to live in sexual immorality without consequence. If you don't want a baby, don't have sex outside of marriage. Do things God's way. He creates a law and a set of rules to protect you. And we go our own way. Did we suffer the consequences and we wonder where God is? God is here waiting for you to come home. You're the one that's running. You're the one that's in rebellion. He said, come home. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be exalted, every mountain a high hill be made low. Let the crooked places be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and our eyes will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken and His word is true. 2,000 years ago, it was prophesied when people were still riding donkeys and camels and there was no technology. It was written by a man named John on an island of Patmos. He had a vision from the Lord that one day you would not be able to buy, sell, or trade unless you have a mark. Today I see on TV we see Operation Warp Speed trying to have every man and woman 
vaccinated from COVID. Oh, how convenient. How convenient we said we have to keep ourselves safe, right? Well, with every good thing comes a sinister plot where evil men with a lot of money have a lot of motive to divide and conquer, to control us, to divide us up. We see riots, we see protests, we see hatred. Why? Because the narrative of the media is to divide us. But Jesus Christ will unite us in love. Sin is the problem. Jesus is the cure. He's the only way that it gets better. One day you're not going to be able to buy, sell, or trade unless you have a piece of technology in you. And its number will be 666. And if you get this mark, it will likely change your DNA and separate you. This is fact. If you get the mark of the beast, it will separate you from God forever. There is no longer any hope of repentance for you. The blood of Jesus no longer available after this mark. A few weeks ago, Satanists all across the United States called for nationwide protest. Satanic worshipers called for nationwide protest to bring about the fulfillment of the book of Revelation found in the Holy Bible that the Christians read and live their life by. All things are coming to pass, my friends. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before your eyes. Judgment is upon us. We are an evil nation in need of repentance. And we've hardened ourselves. We've hardened our hearts. Wrong has become right. Right has become wrong. And we continue in sin like nothing will change. 2020 has been a broken year. Tragedy, chaos, and turmoil. Nations across the earth being shut down. We see the clouds overhead signaling what's going on in the spiritual realm. That there is a storm upon us. That more demons are being unleashed in the world than ever before. And we must repent for the time is late, the night is far spent. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, King of glory, is coming back and you need him. You need his mercy, you need his life to live inside of you, to decrease so that he might increase, to come as nothing so that he might be everything through you. So that people can hear his voice through the testimony of your life and experience his love through your embrace and to know that there is something good in this life. If you've seen bad Christians with bad testimonies, don't blame it on Jesus. If you've seen bad Christians living in hate with false teachings and doing all sorts of foolishness, don't blame God. The devil seeks to devour whom he may. And even in the Christian church, we are divided and broken. The enemy has overrun our gates. It's time for the Christian church and the communities around the world and in America to repent. It's time for Christian pastors in America to repent, to call their assemblies and their congregations to repentance. Enough of the pride, American pastors, enough of the pride. It's time to lay down on the altar, grab a hold of the horns, plead for mercy for this nation, to call a solemn assembly, to repent in sackcloth and ashes, and humility and lowliness of heart, not puffed up in pride. Put down the fancy suits, take off your gold watches and your gold rings, and let God be everything. Let God be true and every man a liar. Enough of the haughtiness, enough of the self-righteousness, the self-idolatry Christian pastors, lay down your pride. Repent for the sins of this nation. Repent for your greed. Repent for your power and control that you've exerted over your congregations. And be lowly as a humble servant that Jesus demonstrated in this life when he was here. We wash each other's feet. We show the love of God. We plead for mercy upon our lands. And if we call out to him, he will hear us. And he will forgive us. He will not deny us. Denver, it's time to repent. Jesus Christ is coming back on the clouds of the sky. I bless you. I want you to know Jesus. Do you know him today? Anybody can know him. The Bible says if you call out 
and if you confess with your mouth that he is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. If you believe by faith, grace can be given to you. Your sin washed away, your life changed and transformed. His law written upon your hearts. Now is the time, my friends. Repent, Denver. The kingdom of God has come near to you.